Look, this is what remains of Hiroshima after the atomic bomb, while this is the Chernobyl power plant just after the disaster. But then why did Chernobyl stay like that while Hiroshima became a metropolis? Today Hiroshima and Nagasaki too are livable cities, they are metropolises, while Chernobyl is uninhabited and especially near the reactor, still radioactive. Why? In this video we'll explain it to you in four points, let's go! Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. Point 1. Event type. We are assuming that most of us know what occurred in Chernobyl, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In the first case there was a radiological accident, something unexpected, while in Hiroshima and Nagasaki two atomic bombs were dropped, little boy and fat man respectively. So we can already see a big difference, we're talking about two different kinds of structures, a nuclear power plant and atomic bombs, which were most importantly used for different reasons. We can say that in one case it was an accident, while in the other case they were used specifically to destroy cities. Radioactivity levels. One of the biggest differences is related to the levels of radioactivity in Chernobyl and Hiroshima and Nagasaki. For Chernobyl, for instance, one of the crucial factors we must consider is the so-called half-life of radioactive atoms. And what is that? What does it mean? Let's try to explain it in just a few words. We can say that radioactive elements are harmful because they decay, that is, they transform into other types of atoms, but they emit radiation in the process. However, this doesn't last. When all the initial radioactive atoms have been transformed, they are no longer harmful to humans. Well, we know how long the transformation process takes, and we use the term half-life to refer to the time needed for half the initial atoms to undergo transformation and become new atoms. In the case of Chernobyl, for example, radioactive elements such as iodine-131, cesium-134, cesium-137 and strontium-90 were released into the atmosphere and then carried by the wind to many regions, as you can see from this map. If we take iodine-131, for instance, it has a half-life of about 8 days. This means that after roughly only a few weeks, the majority of iodine has decayed and its presence is negligible. On the other hand, cesium-134, for example, has a half-life of about 2 years, and at around 30 years, the half-lives of strontium-90 and cesium-137 are even longer. This means that the contaminated area will continue to be contaminated for many years to come. In the cases of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, on the other hand, the bomb explosions mainly produced X-rays and gamma rays, whose radioactivity decayed very quickly. There's even talk of it taking only a few minutes. We must also remember that the neutrons created by the bombs, the neutrons which can produce unstable and radioactive substances, were not only relatively few in number, but at the height of their radioactivity they were also hundreds of meters above the ground. So the air slowed their fall and greatly reduced the amount of radioactive material that reached to the ground. Point 3. Explosion height. Let's connect this to what we've just been saying. In Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the bombs exploded in the air. Because probably in the popular imagination, the bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki fell to the ground. Actually, no, they didn't. Both exploded at an altitude of over 500 meters. But why? Did they make a mistake? No. This was intended to maximize the destructive impact. In reality, the objective of the bombs was not to contaminate the land, but to demolish the city, utilizing the potent shock wave produced by the explosion in the atmosphere. The Chernobyl accident, on the other hand, happened at ground level, which precipitated the deposition of radioactive material on the ground and buildings nearby. By the way, there is also another thing to consider, which is that the mushroom bomb explosions further facilitated the distancing of part of the radioactive material from the ground, pushing it into the highest part of the atmosphere. Point 4. Fuel quantity. Another very important thing we must keep in mind is the amount of nuclear fuel involved in the various cases. Let's consider Little Boy, the one in Hiroshima. In that instance, inside the bomb there were 64 kilos of uranium-235. While Fat Man, the one in Nagasaki, contained 6 kilograms of plutonium-239. Sure, they are enormous quantities if we think about it, but nothing compared to the over 200 tons of uranium in Chernobyl. Furthermore, if we want to be even more accurate, only small portions of the quantities we have just mentioned actually started nuclear fission reactions. For example, for Little Boy we are talking about 700 grams of uranium, for Fat Man about 1 kilogram of plutonium. Do you know how much uranium underwent a fission process in Chernobyl? 7 tons! So we're talking about 10,000 times more radioactive material in the atmosphere than for the Japanese bombs. If we put all the information I've given you together, it's not hard to understand why, 
Only 24 hours after the explosion, radioactivity in Hiroshima had already decreased by 80%. After just a few days, the level of radioactivity was nearly the same as natural radioactivity, the one typically present in rocks and the environment around us. This is the reason why the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki have become metropolises and living there is not dangerous. The situation is different for Chernobyl, where isotopes with very long half-lives are still present as we observed previously. Consequently, an exclusion zone of around 30 kilometers was established around the power plant, within which, at least officially, you can't live. However, I'd like to end this video by taking a moment to reflect, as I would hate to convey the wrong message. Someone might say, oh, but then nuclear power plants are worse than atomic bombs. No, stop right there. Regarding the atomic bombs, we're talking about weapons that were used to kill people deliberately. While in Chernobyl it was an accident that, tragic as it was, obviously was not anyone's idea, no one killed so many people on purpose. Moreover, if we look at the number of victims, we are talking about thousands of victims for Chernobyl compared to tens and tens of thousands of victims in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So, in short, they are two completely different things, and it's good not to confuse them. In this video, just want to describe the two events from a radiological point of view. Well guys, thank you for watching me this far. I hope you found the video interesting and that it taught you something new about Hiroshima, Chernobyl and Nagasaki. We'll see each other for the next video, always here on Geopop Everyday Science. Ciao!